Hi, this is Kendall Boyson, professional life and recovery coach, and you're listening to Encouragementology, the practice of instilling hope. Hi there. Thanks for joining me. On this show, we are picking up, organizing, and instilling the filter. If it doesn't serve us, it has to go. Since we're the owners of our domains, mind, body, and soul, then the only way to control chaos is to declutter our world. Where to start? How about at the source of our frustration, worry, or stress? Pushing it around on the plate and moving it from here or there is not going to solve our issues or open a clear path forward. We have to make some cuts, some deep cuts, to get back on track and make room for some new ideas. Clutter is the physical manifestation of unmade decisions fueled by procrastination. A quote by Christina Scalise. Whoa, the buck stops here. No more excuses. You have things, thoughts, past regrets, and unaccomplished goals which no longer fit. Time for some thoughtful evaluation. Keep, pitch, or donate. As a life coach, I'm often tasked with untangling a person's challenges to help them see a path forward. I think we've all been there a time or two. Overwhelmed, where every pressure in our lives takes on the same level of priority, and before we know it, we're running around with our heads cut off and the sky is falling. It's easy to do. Life is busy, complicated, and oftentimes messy. I don't know about you, but I don't have a life assistant who wakes me up with my to-do list and a steaming cup of coffee, picks out my outfit for the day, tells me what I have to do and what they're going to handle for me so that I can just concentrate on what I do best. Wow, maybe that's the type of robot help we need to be creating. Instead, you have to wake up and tackle it all while running the gauntlet of more challenges and to-dos added as you go. Chaos. There is a time and a place where no matter what else needs to be done, I take a hard pass. If there's any way it can wait until tomorrow, it does. Today, I know my limitations, but there was a time where busy felt productive and productive felt successful and stress was just a part of it. If you're there, don't be swindled by that thought. If you look at the memes, apparel, and home decor telling you to nurture yourself, love yourself, keep calm and hit the beach, and you think those aren't written for you, they are. You will hit a wall. I don't know what your wall will look like, but hopefully it's just a nice wake-up call that you need more balance in your life. Well-rounded doesn't just refer to possessing a personality mixture of a little bit of everything, but you can strive for a well-rounded life. Hey, let's start with the positive right out of the gate. Gustavo Rizzidi shares how to lead a well-balanced life in an article for fearlessculture.com. Life balance is a mirage. The closer you think you get, the further away it goes. How do you find work and life balance? A quote by A.A. Abraham. We don't need to strive toward balance. We rather need to work on the obstacles that are preventing the natural flow of balance. Balance is not something we can get. It's a state of mind. It's the realization that life is not stable, but in constant motion. Ilana Malik says, Freedom without discipline is foolish. Discipline without freedom is insanity. But what does it mean to lead a well-balanced life? Why does balance feel like an elusive concept? The paradox of balance is that the more we pursue it, the more things seem to fall apart. Our worries make us worry more. The word balance is both a noun and a verb. No wonder we struggle to find it. Balance is even distribution of weight, enabling someone or something to remain upright and steady. When we see balance as a noun, we believe it will bring stability to our lives. Balance is bringing things into harmony. It's not something that you can get, 
but something that you continually do. Life is a game in which you're continually juggling many balls in the air. Albert Einstein said, life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. Life is a balancing act. Everything is always in constant motion. No matter how much you plan, things will never go your way. Unexpected events always show up uninvited. Your boss will add a new meeting to your busy schedule. A friend will call you last minute to cancel your dinner plans. Balance requires being flexible. We adapt to the moment rather than rigidly sticking to our expectations. Take work and life balance, for example. Most people try to keep them separate. They build walls and then they feel worse. Approach life as a whole. You cannot organize your activities into separate compartments. Integrate everything you do. Let each aspect of life feed off each other. Leading a well-balanced life requires to let go of control. Research shows that using control to suppress our emotions both harms our memory and increases stress. Studies by the University of Southern California showed that people high in grit were more likely to persist using failing strategies to complete a task. Also, individuals who are highly self-disciplined, rely on logical analysis and willpower to achieve their goals, suffer the most when facing failure. Allow things to fall into place rather than forcing them to fit into a predefined structure. Balance is an inherent human condition. It lies within you. Euripides said, The best and safest thing is to keep a balance in your life. Acknowledge the great powers around us and in us. If you can do that and live that way, you're really a wise man. An unbalanced life feels like a constant battle. You're trying to protect your me time against everyone else's priorities. You want to prevent your work from stealing your family time away. You wish you wouldn't get distracted by the speed and uncertainty of modern life. When the world around you is out of balance, you feel imbalanced too. External forces and events distract your focus. They create a battle between what you want and what you have to do. Balance is less about how we allocate our time, but enjoying what we're doing in the here and now. What's the point of taking off a day if you're worried about what's going on at work? To overcome feeling out of balance, your mind must be where your body is. When you enjoy what you're doing, you stop feeling guilty or blaming others for what you're not doing. Balance lies within yourself. It's your ability to remain centered in the middle of whatever is happening. Equanimity is the steady conscious realization of life's impermanence. It means standing in the middle of all this you see without being caught by what you see. Buddhists consider equanimity as the ground for wisdom and freedom. It enables balanced emotional responses. The power of observation helps you stand in the middle of all this without losing your head. It comes from inner stability. Developing equanimity is cultivating the qualities of mind that support it. So here's how to get started. Integrity. When we live and act with integrity, we become confident about our actions and words. When you make a decision from your heart, there's no room for blame or guilt. Acting with integrity is not just about doing the right thing, but living beautifully. Spirituality. Faith grounded in wisdom is something powerful. Your spiritual practice, cultivating the development of your inner self, helps lead a well-balanced life. You don't need to follow a formal religion. Developing self-reflection, connecting with a higher consciousness, or practicing meditation are also forms of spiritual practices. Inner Calm Just like we exercise to strengthen our bodies, training our mind is key. By practicing mindfulness, 
we can develop a balanced calm and focused mind. When your mind is calm, you're less likely to explode when the world around you is out of balance. Well-being. Staying happy, healthy, and social promotes a state of well-being. It's enjoying taking care of yourself. Enjoy going for a walk, a meal, others' company, or just practicing a hobby. Don't forget to take care of your well-being. Make time for yourself. Wisdom. Most of the things are out of your control. People are responsible for their own decisions. Events in life are unpredictable. Nothing lasts forever either. By realizing the true nature, you can see life's fluidity as balance. Becoming aware of what drives imbalance in your world is the first step towards living a well-balanced life. Freedom. Liberty is not doing everything you want, but not feeling guilty for the choices you make. Freedom is a state of mind. You can conquer your fears. When you're responsible for your own acts, you become free. Letting go brings equanimity. The more you let go, the freer you'll feel. Balance is not a destination, but a constant journey. You might feel out of balance from time to time, and that's okay. Don't approach it with a perfectionist mentality. Accept the good enough. Expectations makes us lose balance. Highwire artists make progress one step at a time. That's why they don't fall. They don't worry about perfect. They only focus on moving forward. So here are some tips to get you started. Number one, integrate all aspects of your life. Stop seeing work, personal time, and social times as separate compartments. Rather than competing against each other, they should all collaborate. Removing this imaginary wall will release a lot of tension. Integrate all aspects by applying learnings across them all. Number two, lose balance to find balance. Letting go of control is key to let things fall into place on their own. Sometimes you have to lose balance to find it. Be open to taking risks. Try something different. If you have to stay at work after hours, take some time off another day. Seek balance in the long term, not in every instance in life. Number three, prioritize your activities. Knowing what matters is the first step. Finding balance requires saying no to something else so you can do what you want. Most of the time, we blame others, but we are the ones that are not making a choice. Let go of unnecessary tasks. Ask for help. Be open to adjusting your goals and priorities. Number four, develop a balanced mindset. Balance is not something external. It lies within you. When something's bothering you, ask yourself why. An out-of-balance context can definitely affect you, but training your mind can neutralize part of the noise. Balance is a state of mind, not a productivity hack. Number five, practice journaling. Set some time to reflect. Track how you spend your time. Identify the tensions and think how to make the necessary adjustments. Also, daily journaling is a great way to capture everything good that happens in life. Acknowledging all the positive things that occurred throughout your day will make you feel grateful rather than stressing you out. Now, if you're like me, you can take top 10 lists of what to do to balance your life as yet another task to do, overloaded on top of everything else you have to do and worry about, right? But don't. Everything I'm bringing to your attention are just ideas. They aren't the secret keys to freedom that are guaranteed to work, but getting out of your own head and exploring alternatives is a positive exercise. There is no pill that will fix this feeling. And the only long-term solution is to understand what you need and what you're willing to take on and let go of. I've said this before, but the seasonality of life has a lot to do with day-to-day stress management. 
So if you're 28, making a hard push in your career, creating a home and adding a family, well then, some of these ideas may seem ludicrous. That doesn't mean they all won't apply or work. For me, I like to add some literary adventure to start my day. Escaping life for an hour in a good book is heaven to me. I love learning about different time periods, history, and some good heroin wins. During the day, I'm pretty choosy on what I allow to take root in my brain. I don't feel the desire or need to be kept up to date with a constant thread of news. I also don't participate in banter that feels more like negative regurgitation versus productive insight. Before bed, I let go of what I did or didn't finish that day, and I mentally check out. A little binge watching, some handiwork to keep my mind preoccupied. Every day is a new day. The year holds 365 opportunities, so it's important to me that I don't carry over or let anything linger. Barry Davenport and Stevie S.J. Scott wrote a book, Declutter Your Mind, How to Stop Worrying, Relieve Anxiety, and Eliminating Negative Thinking. These are some thoughts from that book. Ever feel overwhelmed by your thoughts? Do you struggle with stress or anxiety about the tasks you need to complete on a weekly basis? Do you want to simply stop worrying about life in general? We all experience negative thinking from time to time. But if you often feel overwhelmed by these thoughts, then you should closely examine what you're thinking and how your thoughts impact your mental well-being. This inner monologue is a natural part of our mental landscape. It's there all the time, night and day, reminding you about the groceries you need to pick up, shaming you about missing your sister's birthday, or making you feel anxious about current headlines like, politics, the environment, or the current state of the economy. These thoughts are the background noise of your life, even though you may not always be aware of their constant presence. Take a second right now and pay attention to your thoughts. Try to stop them. It's hard, right? You'll see how they keep streaming in one after another, unhidden and often unwanted. Some of the thoughts are random and useless. My arm itches. It looks like it's going to rain. Where did I put my keys? On the other hand, many of our thoughts are intrusive and negative. That guy is a jerk. I really screwed up that project. I feel so guilty about what I said to mom. Whether they're negative, neutral, or positive, these thoughts clutter our minds, just like your home can get cluttered when you have too many possessions. Unfortunately, clearing your mental clutter isn't as simple as eliminating a possession. You can't throw away a thought and expect it to stay gone. In fact, like a never-ending game of whack-a-mole, your negative thoughts have a way of popping up as soon as you slap them down. Now imagine your mind as a fully organized home. A home that's free from extraneous, draining, and useless items that agitate you. What if you could surround yourself only with thoughts that uplift, inspire, and soothe you? Consider for a moment your mind as a peaceful, cloudless sky, and you have the power to choose what floats across. If that cloudless mental sky is so desirable, then why do we think so much with so few filters to sort the positive and necessary thoughts from the random and unnecessary Your brain contains about 100 billion neurons with another billion in your spinal cord. The total number of connections between neurons, the cells responsible for processing, has been estimated at 100 trillion synapses. Our powerful brains are constantly processing all sorts of experiences and analyzing them in the form of thoughts. Thoughts form what we perceive to be reality. We can control and direct our thoughts, but it often feels like our thoughts have minds of their own, controlling us and how we feel. Thinking is necessary for solving problems, analyzing, making decisions, and planning. But in between the times of proactive mental endeavors, 
the mind roams like a wild monkey, dragging you through the brambles of rumination and negativity. Your constant inner dialogue distracts you from what is happening around you, right here and now. It causes you to miss valuable experiences and sabotages the joy of the present moment. Absurdly, we assume we need to think more or harder in order to figure out why we aren't as happy or fulfilled as we wish we could be. We try to pinpoint the possessions, people, and experiences that might quench our longings and ease our unhappiness. The more we ponder our despair, the more despondent we become. Our thoughts make us restless, empty, and agitated as we project into the future or look to the past for answers. In fact, nearly every negative thought you have relates to the past or future. It's common to find yourself trapped in a looping cycle of regretful thinking or worrying thoughts, even while feeling desperate to escape the never-ending tape playing in your mind. Not only do you struggle with your thoughts, but you also struggle with your inability to be free of them. The longer the negative thoughts continue to loop, the worse you feel. It's almost as if there were two of you, the thinker and the judge, the person thinking the thoughts and the person aware that you're thinking them and judging how bad they are. This thinking, judging dynamic infects us with painful emotions. The more fearful, guilt-ridden, regretful thoughts we have, the more stressed, anxious, depressed, and angry we feel. Sometimes our thoughts paralyze us with bad feelings. And it's those feelings that rob us of inner peace and contentment. Although our thoughts are the culprit responsible for so much distress, we assume there's not much to be done about it. You can't stop your mind from thinking, right? You can't shut off your brain at will or rid yourself of the mental chatter and associated feelings that prevent you from enjoying life fully, right? Occasionally, we've unexpected moments of mental peace and quiet. More often, however, we try to quell the mental chatter by self-medicating with too much food, alcohol, drugs, work, sex, or exercise. But these are temporary solutions to muffle the noise and ease the pain. Soon enough, our thoughts are back at it again, and the cycle continues. Are we destined to be victims of our monkey minds at all times? Must we constantly battle our thoughts and allow them to drag us down with worry, regret, and anxiety? Is there a way to have a clear mind free of negativity and pain? You may not be able to keep your mental house free from clutter all the time, but you can impact your thoughts enough to improve your quality of life and overall happiness in a profound way. Thinking may seem automatic and uncontrollable, But many of our thought patterns are habitual and, well, thoughtless. Although it appears you and your thoughts are inseparable, you do possess a conscious self that can step in with intention and manage your thoughts. You have far more control of your thoughts than you think. When you learn how to control your mind, you open a door to the vastness of creativity, inspiration, and brilliance that is just behind the clutter of those untamed thoughts. Through various mindful practices and practical habits, you can disempower your thoughts and have more space in your mind to enjoy inner peace and happiness. You'll have the clarity to prioritize what's important in your life, what no longer serves your goals, and how you want to live on a daily basis. Not sure if you really need to declutter your mind? Hmm. Let's find out. Do you often find yourself trapped in anxious, negative, and unproductive thinking? Do you lose valuable time, focus, and energy because of overthinking and worry? Have you ever felt frustrated and confused about how to stop negative and compulsive thinking? Have you experienced times of high stress? 
agitation, anxiety, and even depression as a result of mental overwhelm? Have you found yourself looking to money, possessions, work, success, or prestige to fill the void of emptiness or sadness that you might feel? Do you frequently feel so busy, overwhelmed, and stressed that you lose touch with who you really are? Do you find yourself turning to distractions like alcohol, drugs, or other compulsions to numb yourself? Would you like to change your priorities and learn to manage and understand your thoughts so they don't rule your life? Do you sometimes get complaints from your boss, spouse, or family members about your distraction, disengagement, agitation, or constant stress? Maybe you simply desire a more centered, calm, and peaceful lifestyle. More about that can be found in the book, Declutter Your Mind, How to Stop Worrying, Relieve Anxiety, and Eliminating Negative Thinking. Don't you just love a good closet overhaul or tackling the garage? Okay, the thought of that sounds horrible, but the result is so worth it. In the last several years, we've strived to live a more minimalistic existence. Now, before you celebrate our efforts, let me explain. We aren't on a mission to reduce waste to one bag a month, even though that sounds like a very worthy challenge. Instead, we're creating our life around the 98% versus the two. We just don't buy extra stuff for a rainy day. We decluttered every facet of our life so that we have primarily what we use. We don't collect anything or purchase because it's a good deal. Now, when Matt told me I had 15 minutes to choose two spatulas out of the eight we had, I thought he was nuts and, of course, unreasonable. We all know you need more than two spatulas to survive, right? But over time, it made sense, and the freedom created by letting go of all the extra stuff was amazing. I still tease Matt when I can't find something, that he must have thrown it out during a purge. But really, I appreciate this new simplified existence. Herford helps us simplify your life in 10 practical steps found at EssentialsLifeSkills.net. It seems that life has become more complex and complicated, leaving us with less free time to savor and appreciate each moment. Luckily, we have it within our power to stop this trend by creating a less chaotic, more balanced, and enjoyable life, starting now. So here are 10 practical steps to simplify your life. Number one, get rid of unnecessary stuff by prioritizing. Decide what's really important to you and then begin to get rid of some of the clutter you've probably forgotten about over the years. We often tend to hang on to things for emotional, nostalgic, or other attachment reasons. If an object no longer has a practical function or is worn, it's time to consider throwing it away, or if it's still valuable, donating it to charity. It is safe to say that if you haven't used an item in over two years, you're probably unlikely to. Number two, clean up. You'll be surprised what you can find when you decide to thoroughly clean your closets, hidden nooks, and rarely used spaces. I have found things I don't remember purchasing hidden in the back of my closets. The worst part for me is that I've bought practical items for a second time forgetting I already had one. Not good from either an economic or decluttering perspective. Number three, get organized. Streamline and simplify your life by setting up routines for the necessary tasks in your day, like cleaning, paying bills, or doing groceries. Stay organized by making a short to-do list daily, putting things away immediately, allotting time for each task and staying on top of things. When everything is in its place, not only is your living space open and uncluttered, so is your mind. Number four, assess how you spend your time. Decide which actions and activities are important to your lifestyle 
and prioritize them as well. Resolve to only engage in those that matter to you. Don't waste time on those that don't. Design your day to correspond to your priority activities. Number five, learn to say no. Quite often, we get ourselves entangled in situations where we take on far too much, leaving us little time for ourselves. Certainly, it's wonderful to help others. However, we have to know where to draw the line. If we don't, our own lives can get cluttered and unmanageable. Number six, limit social media, television watching, video game playing, etc. Certainly, television watching, the internet, video games, etc. have become very pervasive in our lives. While they each have their proper place and relevance, it's important to not let media dominate our lives and usurp our time. Simplify your life by not letting it take over. Number seven, give up multitasking. Recent research conducted at Stanford University has shown that multitasking actually lowers productivity and increases stress levels. Your performance suffers because the brain can really only focus properly on one thing at a time. Doing one thing at a time and doing it well will not only simplify your life, it will enhance your enjoyment of it. Number eight, declutter relationships. Choose to spend time with those you really care about and whose company you enjoy. Quite often, we're thrown into social situations with people with whom we have nothing in common. We sometimes believe if we decline the party invitation or if we aren't seen at the latest fashionable gathering place, we'll miss out somehow. Not so. Instead, simplifying your life and engaging in what makes sense yields greater peace and well-being. Number nine, reevaluate your buying habits. Much of our clutter comes from buying the wrong things and buying more than we need. Unwittingly, most of us have become brainwashed into thinking we need bigger and more of everything, more food, more clothing, bigger cars, bigger houses. The media has done a good job of making us believe we must spend more money for more things, only to have us end up less happy and with less time to enjoy ourselves. It's time to rethink what we really need versus what we ill-advisedly continue to spend our hard-earned money on. Number 10, learn to relax. No matter how much you simplify your life, there will be times of stress. For such times, engage in the tried and true methods of relaxing, including exercise like walking, swimming, or a sport you enjoy, practicing mindfulness, reading, listening to calm music, or anything else that takes you to a restful, quiet place. Simplifying your life will help you to lessen the more unfavorable effects of living in the fast-paced, minute-to-minute, ever-changing world where we find ourselves today. By taking control, we can set our own pace and in the process live healthier, happier lives. Time. The one thing we don't have enough of. How do you want to spend your time? Really, take some time and think about that. My friend told me that she had an enlightening thought the other day. She was thinking about life and death and realistically how much time she has left. A natural reaction to that vein of thinking is how little time you have and what you want to make sure you fit in before you go. You've heard the song, Live Like You Were Dying. All the things still on your bucket list before you kick the bucket. But instead, she thought, what don't I want to do? Let's think about that. What don't you want to spend your precious time left on? I don't want to spend a moment feeling unworthy. I don't want to spend a moment judging or talking negatively about others. I don't want to spend precious time trying to be something I'm not. I don't want to spend an ounce of time left worrying about what I can't change. 
What about you? Instead, let's spend time exploring ways to enrich our lives. Sound good? Let's revisit Z. Herford. Here's 15 ways to enjoy life more found at EssentialsLifeSkills.net. It bears the question, can you learn to enjoy life more? Some days the world feels like an especially challenging place and we find ourselves getting bogged down with worry, uncertainty, and concern. In order to enjoy everyday life more and put aside some of the concern and uncertainty, here are 15 ways that can help put it in perspective. Number one, savor each moment. We typically don't know when a particular moment will be our last. In order to make the most of each one, we can learn to savor and be mindful of every aspect it offers. Number two, be whimsical, like a child. Remind yourself of the things that made you happy when you were young, like running around in the rain, smelling fresh flowers, playing fun games, and being carefree. Children revel in and enjoy the simple pleasures of life. We should endeavor to do the same. Number three, engage in physical activity. As is well documented, there is a great benefit to exercise of any type, whether fun or for sport. Exercise releases not only happy chemicals known as endorphins, it releases natural pain-relieving and stress-relieving chemicals as well. Number four, laugh more. To paraphrase Harry Ward Beecher, laughter is the best medicine. As with exercise, laughter releases the happy, feel-good chemicals known as endorphins. There's nothing like a talented comic, funny movie, or some good jokes to stir up those chemicals and assist you in enjoying everyday life more. Number five, experience a new activity, like trying a new food, destination, or sport. Enrichment and experience contributes to the enjoyment of life, and there's nothing like trying something totally new. Go for it. Number six, start a gratitude journal. As we've already mentioned, journaling is fun, proven to be therapeutic, and can only enhance your enjoyment of life and life's experiences. Writing about and recording those experiences which make you happy and grateful serve as a continuous reminder of those special moments. Number seven, declutter. You would be surprised how liberating and satisfying decluttering can be if you haven't already picked that up. You will feel lighter, fresher, and ultimately more joyful. Not only that, you'll be more organized and efficient. Number eight, keep learning new things. Learning new things not only gives you a new lease on life, it keeps your brain-body connection young and active. When you look and feel younger, you automatically get more enjoyment from life. Number nine, give back. There are many ways that you can give back to your family, community, and workplace. It doesn't have to be something colossal. It can be a small kindness in the form of opening a door for someone, helping someone with a heavy parcel, or helping a new team member at work. The great feeling that giving back engenders brings added enjoyment to your life. Number 10, plan for the future, but live in the present. Quite often, we get so caught up in planning and preparing for the future that we neglect to live in and enjoy the present. In a study conducted at Harvard, psychologists found that subjects were less happy when their minds wandered and when they were thinking ahead or daydreaming. In fact, it made them more miserable even when the thoughts were pleasant. Staying in the present made them happier and more content. Number 11, celebrate your success. Succeeding is a great way to further boost morale and well-being. In this goal-oriented society, we often jump from one success to the next without taking time to enjoy any of them fully. So no matter how seemingly small, Be sure to enjoy the successes in your life. Number 12, take time to appreciate nature. Whether you enjoy a peaceful walk on the beach or an invigorating swim in the ocean or a hike in the woods, nature 
is the soul's rejuvenator. Life can be a joy when you make the most of all that nature has to offer. Number 13. Appreciate what you have. Quite often, we don't remind ourselves of the freedom and privileges we benefit from. If we stop to reflect upon all we have, we would indeed enjoy life that much more. Number 14. Appreciate your friends and family. It's easy to take our loved ones for granted. However, when times are tough and life deals us some unexpected challenges, it's our dear friends and family to whom we turn for support and encouragement. Don't forget them. Number 15. Know that you deserve to enjoy life more. Remember that life is short and that we deserve to enjoy and reap all the rewards it offers. While we all have our share of challenges and adversity, we also have a big, beautiful world full of potential adventure, discovery, and richness. It's up to each of us to take the time to appreciate and enjoy life more. If you want to share Encouragementology with a friend who needs to know they're not alone in this journey of self-discovery, you can visit Encouragementology.com or anywhere you stream your content to receive this episode and all others. Follow us on Facebook for additional encouragement throughout the week. So I challenge you, purge the clutter that's distracting you from living a well-balanced life. Create space to explore new relationships, welcome new ideas, and live life with meaning. Keep, pitch, or donate. It's all up to you. I know you can do it. Thank you for listening to Encouragementology with Kendall Boyson, where we find positive ways to handle some of life's challenges. I stumbled through until the path was clear.